Welcome to HVAC. We're here at the HR Expo in Las Vegas. And you know, guys, I love the science. I love the chemistry. I love the physics behind everything and what we do. And today I have a very special opportunity with Rachel Kaiser. And Rachel Kaiser is a scientist and she's also a big part of HVAC school. And I'm always enjoying talking to her because there's so much to learn. Thanks, Ty. Oh, it's so great to have you here. Um, so tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. What I like to do is provide some scientific perspective and bring some alternative ideas and approaches to the fundamentals that help to lead our education and the fundamentals behind the HVACR trade. And there's so much science in behind what we do. What is it that you love about what you do? I mean, to me, it's always about exploring the next possibility, and science gives that as an endless array of areas to explore. So there's never an opportunity not to learn something new that helps to drive anything that we want to do. That's absolutely right. And that's whether it's uh, getting to work with the HVACR professionals like I have been here at the show, or whether that's um, with students in a school or just uh, normal interactions out and about. There's often just science all around that uh, it helps really us. is science all around us and what's crazy is the science is already here everything's already around it's just us discovering it discovering new ways to make it happen finding new things out but it's still always been here and always here yeah it's more of the being able to answer the why we we are able to easily see what an action takes place just a ball even simply rolling along the carpet here at the show that's that's physics in action the the piece that I like to drive to is why does that ball slow down? Those are the kinds of things, it's the why, and it kind of drives to that same fundamental question that we have, whether when I get to the opportunity to talk to technicians or to other scientists, it's that why that often drives any of us. Why is something not working as a technician? Or why does a system for us, whether it's chemical, physical, on those things, why is what we see happening actually happening. You know, I used to always get in trouble as a kid because I would I'd have a toy and we didn't have a lot of money growing up. We'd get a new toy and I would play with it, but I had to know, how does it work? What makes it work? So I'd always get in trouble because I had to take it apart to see how it worked. And they didn't always go back together at that early age, but the curiosity of, why does that move like that? I think it's fascinating. My brother and I usually got two. So one was for exploration <laughs> and one was for, um, helping to either recreate the first one or for that might be the play one at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So it's amazing how that curiosity, if you have that curiosity, it just makes learning so much more fun. And really science is all about curiosity. How does that thing work? And then we just keep breaking it down to a whole new level. Correct. And the science piece from a, that classical kind of education or approach really, because it's not about the classroom time when it comes to science particularly. Yes, there's all those classroom opportunities, but it's really the mental approach with science that's the key takeaway of walking into those everyday situations and asking in an approach kind of way, what do you think is happening? How can I test and see if my idea of what is happening is true or false, recreate a new hypothesis if that was the wrong guess and continue through that process over and over, to me is the fundamental key takeaway of bringing that scientific approach across any of that. And that's how historically all the scientists that we know by name, even in a cultural sense, that's what they did over and over. We may know them for the activity that they found that right answer situation around, but they had so much trial and error to get there. That's exactly right. And really, science is that method of plays with HVAC now. Even just down to what a technician level, we say, hey, we think this is what the problem is going to be. This is what we think is happening. Here's what we think the solution would be. And then we try it, and then we retest to see, did that solve the problem? So really, that scientific method goes down to our day-to-day -day life. We think this is gonna work, let's see if it actually works, and then test to see if it fixed it or changed something else. Yeah, and I, it also, having that scientific method and approach helps to bring a lot of safety mechanisms to a technician or to a scientist because once you're starting to ask those questions, you're bringing the right amount of hesitation 
into a situation where you're not going to put yourself in the position where a dangerous chemical or a release of a gas where you're not going to be able to breathe in a situation as a technician that if you are able to do some of that that theoretical hypothesizing what the issue could be you keep yourself out of those dangerous situations more times than if you I, just go in i never thought about that that's really cool What's your favorite part about uh, about science that relates in the HVAC? I think so far, like with working with the HVAC community, is how enthusiastically they receive the learning related to finally seeing the the fundamentals and how they truly connect to the work that they've already been doing, oftentimes for so many years. There's that disconnect between what they saw, like sometimes even as a child of some simple scientific experiments that were done, but they never had the connection made between those and the work that they're doing now. And so being able to draw that dotted line and show that connection of where you can take theory and some examples and truly enrich the kind of work that they're doing, that's definitely a highlight. That's awesome. Remember in the trade, when I was young in the trade, I was taught, hey, do it this way. And I was, I was doing it, I was making decent money, and I enjoyed what I was doing, but the why factor was always there. When I started learning why, and the science, and the physics, and all the stuff that goes in the chemistry even, that goes into HVAC, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. It can get overwhelming, but find a path you let your curiosity lead you. And that's when I really started really growing and starting understanding of things a lot more. And that led to more questions, which led to more curiosity, and more answers, and more finding answers. Now, even if I'm looking for this much information, I find that I learn this much information. So it's just that learning, looking for something, studying for something. I learned so much more than just that one piece I was looking for. And it's true in science, whether you're coming from a, working in a university company or anything like that, to applying science in the practical side, like HVAC technicians do, because truly they're working as scientists, whether governments or themselves want to call it that, that's what they're doing. It's that application piece that makes and gives so much opportunity, creates an environment that truly drives that continual learning. Everyone is required to wear a mask at all times, regardless of the vaccination status. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> but the HVAC schools focus on that continuing learning, whether you're a fresh new person entering the field or if you're someone that has so many years of experience. That focus on continuing learning and sharing the information is something that I think is super valuable from the scientific side of including that focus of what's driving those whys so you can continue to get better and better, not simply of this is how you fix a given system because somebody else before you that shares in that community how they navigated it, but you can learn to troubleshoot it better yourself so that when you hit one that is new, not just to yourself, but to the community at large even, that they can have a much higher rate of success at reaching that's the end goal. Really awesome. I mean, that's really, really good. I always love talking to Rachel because we I always learn something new every single time I talk here. She's talking about some, uh, talking about coffee cup theories and all kinds of stuff about heat transfers. And I love heat transfer. I love thermodynamics. And yet she always brings something new to it. I was like, I thought I had that down and now I picked up something new and there's so much so much to learn. Yeah, there's so many different uh, ways to uncover another nugget when it comes to ways to take a simple scientific principle, whether you're a math person and just want to look at the equation or an application person, there's all these nuggets that you can uncover and see them from a different light. Now you got people coming into the trade, people thinking about coming into trades or even careers in general. You're saying, hey, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? And it's very <laughs> daunting. And you don't have to do one thing particularly. You can continue to grow and change. People come from HVAC from all different backgrounds because it's so relatable. And what's great is whether you came from another place in the HVAC or using HVAC as a stop point for something else, it has places for everybody. But what would you suggest for somebody that's considering a new career, whether it's in HVAC or trades in general, what would you suggest for somebody looking for that new thing? I think a base knowledge of really taking some effort, and it doesn't have to be in a classroom setting, at some of the fundamentals across several of the science areas 
chemistry, physics, biology, gives you a working vocabulary to be able to pull into pretty much any kind of career path across the HVACR industry and so many others that that type of language choice opens a lot of doors, windows, rooftops, depending on how you want to approach it. You know that I love talking about and giving examples of science with HVAC, and we're going to have a lot more of that as we go through. And we'll be talking with Rachel a lot more about coming up with different ways of demonstrating that and making sure we bring that to life because she has a massive amount of information. Now, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you or want to learn more, how would they do that? The best way is actually at the HVACR chemist at gmail.com. But Rachel, it's so awesome. Thank you for coming and talking with us Thanks, and Ty. sharing this great information.